Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here. All right, we're going to continue to take a look at the roguelike dungeon crawls available on Game Crafter. We recently took a look at uh, Quest for the Lost Pixel, which we will be returning to soon, and just in a couple days as we take a look at some of the expansions for that game. And then, of course, uh, just a few days ago, we took a look at Iron Helm, which was a nice little card-based game. And now we're going to take a look at Rogue Dungeon. Uh, Rogue Dungeon is a small box card-based roguelike dungeon crawl. And um, I have to say, I absolutely love this game. Um, this game is so much fun and it has so much going for it and i think with just a little bit of work this could be like a stone cold classic um yeah i i think this game is is just fantastic it does need a little bit of work i think it needs one small expansion and an art director to kind of um, focus the artistic vision of the game. And with those two things, uh, this could be an absolute hit. I wish that the Dungeon Dive as, a, as an organization, I wish I had the money to like put in to developing a game, to helping somebody develop a game. I think that would be a really neat thing to do if I had the financial ability to do that. And this might be like the first game I've come across where I've really thought about doing that because this has so many great things going for it. Um, tons of options and neat mechanisms and it does have some very good art. Unfortunately, it's kind of all over the place and it ends up looking kind of ugly set up because you have all these different things kind of competing you have this like kind of stone uh, kind of stone texture look it looks kind of like old and dated um, almost like an Aztec kind of look but then you have some very typical colorful fantasy art and as we're gonna see we're gonna take a look at some of the art in detail and a lot of it is really good I was actually surprised at how good some of the art is it just doesn't um, it doesn't work together to form a cohesive vision, which I would like to see. Um, some of the art seems to embrace a kind of 32-bit PlayStation era art. And I would really like to see the game fully embrace like a 32-bit look because we have a lot of game, or not a lot, but the whole pixel-based game with pixel-based art is kind of a subgenre into itself, especially like in video games. One thing that people haven't embraced very much is that 32-bit look, that early PlayStation era, which does have a definitive look. Uh, there is like one or two video games. I think um, Anodyne 2, I believe it's called, is kind of a celebration of the early 32-bit days of computer graphics. And this might be a perfect game for that. Um, but some of the other art is more typical fantasy art, and I think even that is good. So we'll just take a look at that as we go. But um, at its core, what Rogue Dungeon is, and let's see if it does name the... Um, yeah, so Rogue Dungeon, uh, the artwork was uh, is done by John Bonnard Smith, the design by Albert Danish and Chad Minichia. And this is available on the Game Crafters. So what this is, is it is a roguelike dungeon crawl you are each game as you are going on a run and what you are trying to do is you are trying to work your way down five levels of a dungeon exploring different rooms fighting different monsters getting treasure getting loot all in the hopes of facing off against one of the dungeons or one of the bosses excuse me when you reach the end of that fifth floor and those bosses include a red dragon a balrog a Lich King, and a Storm Giant. I have never gotten to one of the bosses yet. Uh, <laughs> it's quite a difficult game. That is one area where I think maybe there could be some develop development. I'm hoping that the um, designers see this video and maybe they can chime in about like, their win percentage because the 
the numbers game gets very hard to maintain through each level the the ramp up to like the target numbers you need to to hit the monsters so i'm just wondering if maybe maybe they, they could scale that a little better that might be something to think about but um but man there is so much going for this game and the first thing you're going to do is you're going to pick a character and this is one area where I think the art could be better. Not the art, but the design of the card. There's just, there's a lot of clashing colors. And um, it just, you know, if you had a more cohesive design to the look of these character cards, it would go a lot in kind of just creating a, a, a more professional feel to the game. But you have uh, these different characters. You have a crusader, a rogue, a dwarf miner, a sorcerer, and an elf ranger, and um, there are opposite genders for each, so you can play whichever gender you want, male or female there. I really like this uh, female crusader. She's pretty cool looking. And then each of the characters is going to have a number of stats. You have like a strength, agility, and knowledge. You have their health and their wounds. Um, their luck, which luck is a, a currency that you can spend to uh, help yourself out in different stat tests. And you also have a uh, your starting damage value. Now, each of the different characters is going to have a um, a standout stat. What is it? What do they call that? A, a main stat. I forgot what they call that here. Uh, let me just look real quick. Um, you're going to have your primary ability. Primary ability. So the Crusader's primary ability is his or her strength. The Rogue's is agility. The Miner is strength. Uh, the Sorcerer's is knowledge. And the Elf Ranger's is agility. And that's basically going to be used in combat. And anytime you're going to do a test of your core ability, you're going to use it, that one that's been highlighted. And then with the characters, each of the characters is going to come with a set of uh, starting equipment cards. And so here we have our male and female crusader. And the crusaders are going to start with a shield, which is going to go on this character sheet here. This is your whole board. This is where you lay out your dungeon and your character side. Nice little area to keep everything contained. You're going to start off with a gold cup, which is treasure, because at certain points throughout your adventure, you're going to be able to trade treasures for other items. So you want to collect treasure in order to have it sometimes you will also be told to if you fail a test you have to discard treasure or take damage that kind of thing all right the crusader is also going to start off with a sword which has the icon for his or her um, core ability there and it also has a special ability where you can spend luck to do more damage and then three different skills Turn Undead, Blessed, and Hand of God. Turn Undead and hand of, God, hand of God are discarded to use, whereas Blessed is not. So these are the three skills that your uh, Crusader will have throughout the game. This is one area where I would like to see a small expansion. I will talk about uh, the, the small expansion I would like to see for this game. I would like to see more abilities for each character that you can get as you level up to help um, just build your character in more interesting ways than just adding loot. So more skills for each character would be really nice. And then there is a deck here of cards where you will have each of your um, classes will have their own abilities. And they are pretty different. Some of these um, items that they start with will help in certain tests, like ropes will help pass certain kinds of traps. There are helmets and pickaxes, forged armor, a backstab ability, hunks of cheese, sneak attacks, um, evading and disarming traps, lock picks, daggers, um, a shield spell, an animate dead for kind of like a necromantic effect, magic staffs. Uh, luck spells, fireballs, teleports, mithril shirts, double shots, bows, luck spells, torches, resist magic, and speak to animals. There is a chance where you can charm animals and have them help you as allies. And then you're also going to start each game. Um, oh, the, the um, Crusader also starts with a loaf of bread for some healing. And then each um, character is going to start with three items from the special item deck, and those are camping gear. And that allows the uh, character to camp and heal at certain points throughout the game. 
So then what you're going to do is uh, you're going to set your stats up here. So you have your core stat at the top here, and then your, your, your strength, your um, agility, knowledge, and health. You're going to keep those um, depending on where they are. Each one is going to have a certain number of XP that as you defeat enemies and pass traps, you're going to learn, you're going to earn experience points, and then you can buy new um, upgrades in these stats to raise those up. You can uh, buy more health to raise your health up, and you're going to keep track of your health, your luck, your damage, and your XP down here in this little track down here with these small little chits. And so what you're going to do is, is uh, you're going to pick five different dungeon cards. So you're going to go from level one to level two, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different dungeon cards, and those are double-sided. So you have 14 different dungeon layouts. You're going to be seeing five for each game. And this is one element that is super cool. And I think one element of this game that I like a lot more than Iron Helm is you are actually exploring a dungeon and it does kind of matter the way you go and how you progress through the dungeon. So let's say I shuffle these up, flip over a couple, and let's pick our five. So one, two, three, four, five. All right. So these would be the five dungeons that we would have to go through. Dungeon one, you have to make it to the um, entrance or the from the entrance to the exit. And you're going to be going down into dungeon two into dungeon three, dungeon level four, and dungeon level five there. And as you uh, work your way through the dungeon, you're gonna take your little uh, clear hero meeple here, you're gonna place that on the entrance, and then you can move around through the dungeon, um, stepping on these different color gems, and those coincide to different rooms and different types of events. And as you can see, there are dead ends and you will have to backtrack. Now what's interesting is as you pass through these uh, different gems, you're going to take a gem token. You're gonna to lay that over that like that. And that shows you that you've already um, used that particular space. So you can go to this green gem. You can only encounter that green gem once. And then you can move down here to the blue. Then you can move over here to the yellow. Now from here, you have a couple different ways you can pick to go. You can go over here and go to the red. The red gems are always um, combat. So you know that when you hit a red gem, you're gonna have to fight a, a monster, maybe multiple monsters. And you do wanna do that as often as you can because that's your main way you're gonna get experience points. Your green and blue rooms are normally kind of good things that can happen to you. White, green, blue, and purple. Those are like magical rooms. Those are ways that you can get more magical treasure. You can get allies and good things can happen to you in those rooms. The red, like I said, those are encounters with monsters and the yellows are traps. But what's really interesting about the yellow rooms is that they are persistent. So when you hit a yellow room, you are going to draw one of these yellow cards to um, represent that room. And so if we hit that first yellow, we would find this poison gas. And in this room, uh, the room begins to fill with poisonous gas. Each hero must make a vitality minus two check. If you fail, lose health equal to the dungeon level. If you pass, gain two XP. Well, the thing is, is that yellow room, that stays in the dungeon. And you take that uh, Roman numeral, numeral one token and you put that on the card there. And so, Anytime you go back to this yellow one, you have to pass through that poison gas chamber. So if you were moving from the blue to the yellow, you'd have to face that poison gas. You wanted to go over here and fight this monster. And then you wanted to come back because this is a dead end. You'd have to go back through that poison gas chamber. And so that does lead for some actually interesting exploration as you work through some of these mazes because you may be getting low on health or maybe you're not good at that particular test, but there is something good beyond that one yellow room. But then you have to think, well, I might have to backtrack to get back out. So there are some actual choices that you have to make about how you are going to move through the dungeon. And the fact that it's just done on these simple cards, but having these persistent rooms come out changes the way that you might want to go through the dungeon. That is just a fantastic design choice that I hardly ever see in any of these other like single deck or card based dungeon crawls like this. Um, 
I don't think there was ever anything like that in like one deck dungeon. You were just kind of like going through each room by room. That's kind of how it is in Iron Helm. It never really feels like you are exploring a dungeon that is a persistent layout of a labyrinth. And this does just because of those simple um, yellow rooms that stay persistent and the way the different rooms are kind of categorized. So there are a whole bunch of different uh, traps. There's trap doors, trapped chests, a bat swarm, a mimic. See, that kind of looks like old like CGI. And if they were kind of really to embrace that look throughout everything in the game, I think that would be pretty cool. Uh, you can get overrun by hordes of gremlins, a troll bridge, gelatinous cubes, swinging blades, a narrow edge that you have to pass like with your an agility check, a lake of fire, a spider's web, a cave-in, a crushing wall, and a maze to get through. So those are the yellow rooms. The red rooms are very simple. They just have um, various art work and they will tell you to face different enemies. So you have to draw one monster and resolve uh, combat. There are a deck of monsters for each floor from one, two, three, four, and five up there, as you can see. And uh, each one has well, it's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about eight different monsters. And most of the time on each floor, it looks like there are three different red encounters. So you will have a guarantee of three monster battles per floor. So you can kind of plan out your route there. And like the, the easy monsters, you have goblins, skeletons, uh, wolves, green slimes, gnolls, scorpions, zombies, and cave bears. Combat is relatively simple. Down here, it's going to tell you the hit points that your enemy has. It's going to tell you your target number that you need to hit on a roll of a d10 plus any bonuses. If you fail to hit the monster or you tie with the monster, then the monster you're going to do your damage or... If you hit that number, it's a tie. You, you and the monster will each do damage to each other. If you beat that number, then you do damage to the monster. And if you fail to hit that number, then the monster wins and they do their damage to you. That was a very complex um, <laughs> explanation of a very easy thing. You get what I was trying to say there. Um, but these are the level one monsters. And they ramp up in difficulty pretty quickly with like, they ramp up to like a 10 target number. And then you start to get these special boat um, abilities that the monsters have, where if you roll that number on a D10, they're going to do a special attack back to you in addition to their normal attack. And there are a number of monster special abilities from absorbing attacks, curses, dragon scales, extra attack, flame strikes, lightning. Uh, melting armor, regen, rings of fire, sleep. So a whole bunch of different things that the um, special abilities that the monsters can do back to you. This is a really good example though here of how I said some of the art is inconsistent because you have some of this um, CGI looking art, but then you also have some hand drawn art. And so, you know, it would just be nice to pick one style or the other. Giant spiders, giant cobras, an imp, a hellhound, a harpy, and a gargoyle. So those were like the level three. And then we'll skip over here to level five. These start to get pretty nasty here because they will have multiple abilities. So you're gonna have different um, die rolls that are gonna do super negative things to you. A basilisk, a mummy, a fire elemental, a vampire, a soul gazer, a cyclops, a devil, and fear elemental, and an ogre mage. And then the red rooms, of course, like I said, they're going to tell you to draw a monster and face it. Sometimes they will have its own monster in the room there. Um, you will have a couple different special encounters. And you have one uh, encounter that is particularly bad, and that is this pit of despair where you have to draw three monsters and resolve combat. And when you're resolving combat against more than one monster, it just it makes the monsters stronger. So pretty cool in the red rooms there. And then we get to the uh, green, purple, blue, and white rooms. And this is one area, the additional area, which, where I would like to see an expansion. Because as you play through the game, there's going to be one green, white, purple, and blue uh, gem, so a uh, room of, the, of that color, to explore, to encounter on each dungeon. 
So that means five green, five blue, five purple, and five white. Well, there are only five of each card in the base game. So if you fully explore each floor, there is a guarantee that you will see every single card in this deck each game. I would love it if there was just a small expansion that came with like five more of each color with some variety of the encounters and the things that can happen to your character. And then at the beginning of the game, you shuffled those those 10 cards of each color and drew five for your game. So then you would never know what you were getting. It would just, it would, it would add to the illusion of exploration even more. But some of these are pretty interesting and I think they did a good job. So you have your green cards here. So when you encounter a green room, you're gonna draw one of these, a magic mouth, a locked door, a witch, a mystical fountain, or an alchemist lab. So most of those are kind of good things that you can encounter that can help your character. Then you're your purple rooms here. You have orbs of destruction, a pit of spikes, a prison cell, a sword in a stone, and a weapons master. So kind of a mix of some good and bad things that can happen to you. And then in your blue rooms, you're gonna have a gold deposits. If, you're, if your hero has a pickaxe or battle axe, halberd or horn of blasting, take a bag of gold from the specialty deck. Wounded dwarf, a dark room, a locked safe, or a song of sirens there. And then in your white rooms, you will have a sacred temple, a gnome trader, that's where you can trade some of your treasure, a skeleton trader, a gold a guild merchant, and a wise man. And so throughout the game, you're gonna to be told to, at certain points when you defeat a monster, you will be told to draw from the loot deck. And at certain points, you will be told to draw things from the specialty deck. The specialty deck is not shuffled and it's kept face up. And at certain times throughout the game, you're going to be searching through this deck here and drawing the correct card. You can get allies such as the wise man. You can get treasure like the bag of gold. You can charm um, enemies that you face. You can charm a spider to become an ally or a group of rats, a horde of rats. Uh, you can charm the wolf, you can charm the cobra, and then you can also get special, more um, powerful items in this specialty deck. And in your normal loot deck, you have uh, different items, and the weapons are going to have an icon with your primary ability, and that dictates how much damage you do. Depending on how many items you have with your uh, primary stat ability there, that says you're gonna do two points of damage on every hit. And there is a little bit of, of nuance and caveats to that system, but that's basically how it works. There are different kinds of armor you can get, different kinds of spells. So there is quite, there are quite a few different items you can get, and you really do want to fight so you can get these items because a lot of these are just gonna help you survive getting down to that last floor. The farthest I've ever made it is to uh, level four and um, it's completely died. And I've only done that once. I've played three times. Uh, the first game, first two games I lost at floor three and then the, the next one at floor four. Um, there's probably more luck involved in this game than Iron Helm. Um, maybe not as much luck as uh, Quest for the Lost Pixel. I believe that Iron Helm is a game that you can learn and get better at. That's probably not so much the case here because you are dealing with a lot more loot. You are dealing with more stats and just more random elements in this game. So it is more of a random style dungeon crawl. But as you're going through the floors, yeah, you're gonna be getting more loot. You're gonna be getting allies. You're gonna be getting treasure and potions and uh, spells and better armor. The one thing you're not gonna be getting, which I said would be nice to have, uh, in a small expansion is some more abilities for each character so you could level up your character and just give you a better chance of getting to that fifth floor. But um, yeah, overall guys, this game is awesome. I, I love it. I am, um, you can even tell by the, 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 the disparity between like these two images. It looks like they're from two different games. And so that's one area where I think, you know, an art director, and somebody who could just say, hey, let's, um, let's pick a style and focus on that style to add a cohesive look to the game. It would go a long way in, I think, just making this game feel a little more professional. 
and I know it's not a professional uh, game, but as a as an amateur design and an amateur release on a game crafter, this thing is awesome. I mean, I would I would have been more than happy if I walked into a store and bought this off the shelf, thinking it was, you know, like a just kind of an indie game. And uh, it's it's very good. the The rules are are well written. They are concise and clear. Um, I've read rule books from professional, I know, two hundred dollar Kickstarter games that are not as well written as this rule book. It would be nice, maybe a little more flavor text, or not, uh, yeah, flavor text, to just kind of sell the the story. Um, that was one thing that I really liked about Iron Helm, if you remember, just that that really basic story about you being an old adventurer going into one last dungeon before you retire you know rogue dungeon could use something like that just to add that little bit of narrative spice to the already great random card based dungeon crawl that this is so yeah that was a look at rogue dungeon i highly highly recommend this game um, if you want a card-based roguelike dungeon crawl with cool exploration and neat combat and items, this is one of the best out there, guys. This is a really, really good game. Just kind of, um, you know, you might have to uh, avert your eyes a little bit at some of the, 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 the clash of, of the, 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 the way that, that the different artistic elements might clash a little bit. But just get over the that and you will, I think, have a lot of fun with Rogue Dungeon. Highly recommended. I wish I had the money to invest in developing this game and helping to develop it and just push it kind of over the edge to that next level, and I think this could be a huge, huge hit. So, all right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed that video, and we will talk to you later. Bye-bye.